H1 Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Welcome, Chief, right? Good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President and Board. It's uh, really my honor and privilege to serve you as Fire Chief. That was effected November 1st. Maybe a, a brief background, uh, a little personal. Uh, I've been a professional firefighter since 1978. I've served as uh, Fire Chief, uh, actually, in San Rafael since 2007. Uh, I've been happily married for 37 years, and my wife and I also have so I have brothers and, and um, one of those brothers actually has eight children. Um, they both live in Marin, one in San Rafael and one in uh, Nevada. So please accept uh, our appreciation for uh, your, your confidence in this opportunity. Uh, thus far, uh, we believe it's been a smooth transition. Uh, we're uh, doing everything we can to get up to speed and uh, provide you with uh, what we believe will be uh, outstanding service and some expanded capacity. Uh, the Maroonwood firefighters, uh, the CSB uh, staff, and the, and the community have been very welcoming and helpful. Uh, you really do have some great people, and uh, we'll do our best to support them in the best way uh, possible. Um, I, I'd like to you know, add, make a few comments about the fire activity right now. Uh, there's clearly smoke in the air, uh, and it's a significant event occurring uh, north of us, about 140 miles uh, in the area of Paradise, and then in Southern California. Uh, it is truly a fire siege. It has wreaked havoc on uh, these, these communities. Uh, both the, uh, the Camp Fire and the Woolsey Fire are um, still far from being contained. Uh, the campfire, the most destructive of the two uh, in Paradise. It, I don't know if you've been to Paradise, but it literally did wipe out that town. The devastation is severe. Uh, it's no doubt that the, uh, the death toll will continue to rise beyond uh, the, the 40 to 44 people that have been identified. There are still 200 missing. And there are nearly 9,000 structures that have been identified that it's destroyed. Uh, and this is arguably the deadliest fire in the history of the state of California. Interestingly enough, seven of the largest now uh, lost fires in the history of the state have all occurred within the last 12 months. So what we're seeing here is a fundamental shift. And I think in whether you look at scientifically, whether the equator is moving north, Climate change is real. Uh, the continued drought, expansion into these wildland areas with growth and population, uh, and the vegetation, and these factors of the wind. Um, we experienced three red flag uh, events over the last uh, three weekends um, here within the state and here locally in, in Marin. And uh, right now, there's about 10,000 firefighters that are fighting uh, on the line. In uh, San Rafael, we have a nine, five uh, to the north, and four uh, to the south, and those that are supporting us uh, here at home. Really significant effort. Uh, locally, here in San Rafael, we uh, have both active and retired members that lost homes in this recent uh, fire in, in Paradise. And um, I think it's... Uh, a measure of, of what can come, uh, we need to be prepared for. I had the opportunity to be able to speak with uh, community members assembled last week at a CERT uh, community-wide meeting uh, and uh, crime prevention, and I think we've got some work ahead of us. Unfortunately, there's a number of things I think we can do. Um, becoming a fire-wise community and, and trying to really amplify our efforts where it's really gonna take all of us working together um, I think you've made a positive step uh, forward in building some additional capacity. That trail system is also going to provide a 2.8 uh, mile buffer. Uh, so while there's some balanced needs with the removal of more vegetation, I think we'll be likely coming to you in the future uh, with some more recommendations of what we can do locally here uh, to bolster not only our response capability, but our prevention and preparedness capability, which I think will be um, very important. We're here to best support um, your efforts and what you would like to see done in the community, and I stand uh, ready to do that. I did provide a written report and also uh, a, a narrative and then uh, some dis 
statistics. We'll be refining some of those. Um, I might also mention we're going to be plotting some for you on a map so that you can see at a glance exactly who's going where and things, and we're happy to provide any expanded uh, capability in terms of you know, truly understanding response and activity levels and all of that. The uh, forced multiplier that's in effect is, um, and we appreciate uh, Chief Roach's service, but you actually now have six uh, chief officers at your service, and in addition to a dozen um, paid professional staff uh, that work directly for San Rafael, but now are available to you. So some of those uh, members are already um, working in the community, vegetation management specialists, fire prevention inspectors, um, our emergency manager, uh, Quinn Gardner, has already, already been very active um, with Ryan Wood, and so please call upon us um, as the needs arise. But again, we're happy uh, to support you and feel that together uh, with that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are questions, comments? Um, please go on. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Um, very much looking forward to the new chapter. And um, I hope that our fire commission can feed off your energy and um, ideas. Uh, I personally feel it would be lovely to have uh, more predictable checker days throughout the community so um, the residents can plan accordingly yes. and um, take advantage of a machine that's set place, set time, yes. uh, reliable. I know that there have been some abuses of this in different communities. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't really know how to address that. Um, another um, um, thought that you know we, we don't have to look too far uh, for inspiration for is um, the Upper Lucas Valley being a firewise community. That's a tremendous opportunity again for our fire commission to to take on, and I hope with your experience and knowledge, you can guide them and, and form a collaborative effort to um, move it forward. Um, just a silly little question, but I just am not knowledgeable that much. Um, average response time for fire engine is five minutes, 36 seconds. What's the golden standard? That's well within it. It's actually um, any, anything I think you see that's less than seven minutes is a well within an acceptable range. And so this is a composite of both code two, the designation between code two and code three, code three, red lights and siren. Some calls are actually a response is actually code two without red lights and siren. That could be uh, an emergency medical call, but not one that's life threatening or critical. That may have responded. Think about it as assisting someone uh, getting up that has fallen or something like that. Um, so this is a, a quick composite, and we're able to actually drill into more details if you would like. But it's a, it's a good standard, and you um, have the benefit of uh, rapid response. That I think is you know, ultimately the result of that is you know they say big fire starts <coughs> small, so we're able to address things in their earlier stages uh, quickly, and you benefit from a good response time here uh, throughout the community. So far in your newly formed marriage, uh, what um, obstacles have you seen, what problems have arisen that you are looking forward to resolving? I think it's just maybe getting, uh, uh, working with uh, some of the different organizations and uh, providing a good comfort level in terms of the, of the transition, uh, including the schools. Um, that I know we're going to do. I think I'm attending a uh, school meeting next week and have been in touch with them. So I, I really want to make sure there's a, a solid presence and they know that they can rely upon us. And then uh, working through likely um, departmental and operational functions, uh, administrative uh, revenue functions, making sure we're maximizing opportunities and uh, being as efficient uh, as, as we can. Um, and, uh, and certainly uh, standardizing and improving um, things wherever possible as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Here. First, uh, welcome to Marinwood, Chief Gray. Thank you. Uh, I attended the, the CERT meeting last <coughs> week. I'm sorry the other four board members didn't because it was a great presentation by the Chief and of the staff members that was there. 
uh, I think it would have been very enlightening. Uh, maybe he could, sometime when there's time at a meeting, copy some of that or repeat some of it. It's on the video. In any event, uh, it was a good presentation. Uh, I, a couple of questions. On your business card, it says Center Hill Fire Department, I think it's ISO 1. Yes. And that's the highest rating of the insurance industry for Santa Fe. Am I correct? Yes. What are, where are we? Well, we're below that in, in Marin Wood. Um, and uh, we're going to be evaluating that uh, in the near future uh, to determine whether there are any opportunities to increase, uh, increase that rating. Generally speaking, a rating of uh, anywhere from uh, uh, four to three to two, and it's a one through 10, um, so one being the highest, and it's a reflection on not only your ability to suppress a fire. This doesn't reflect on really emergency medical activity or anything, it's truly fire suppression and then prevention. Um, but it's a, the result is, uh, insurance rating per se. So the lower the ISO class, the generally the better benefit you have for an insurance rating. Um, and the greatest beneficiaries are really commercial properties. Uh, residences don't receive as much of a benefit, but there is some, and some of that's still really intangible. Um, but that's one of the things in the, uh, we look through opportunities for Marimba, much like a Firewise community and other designations going to see what it's going to do. I, I've not looked through the most recent survey, determined where points could actually potentially be uh, earned to improve the rating yet. But we will in the future, and I'm happy to report back to the board with some of our recommendations. Generally, those ratings are uh, looked at uh, every 10 years. Uh, or you can request a review um, should you feel you've got an opportunity to lower your rating. Well, I understand that yeah, that it primarily affects commercial structures, which we have extremely few. few of. But it can't help but mean there's better fire protection. That's correct. So I would hope that we could work towards reducing our ISO rating. Uh, last question, and it's really, I know the answer already because uh, Eric gave it to me, but I would really like it to be in the minutes. And so I'll ask, is the kitchen remodeling project completed? And how did we do relative to the budget? The kitchen is done. It's actually a very nice kitchen. If you haven't had a chance to go see it all, uh, John Pope did a really good job putting it together. Uh, he came in approximately a thousand dollars under the contracted amount with him. So a little under, but nothing of any extraordinary amount. Uh, uh, and again, it was approximately a thousand, but it is a done wrap project. He's been paid in full. Recently, yeah, and I don't remember, I was thinking the same thing, um, and I don't remember exactly what it Im improved to. I'd have to kind of go back through uh, uh, former Chief Rose's notes. Uh, I, I, I don't recall exactly where it's at, but I do know it did improve with the last round of... Uh, uh, reviews. Yeah, review, better term. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh, Marinwood email address? We're working on that. Okay. Yes. And right now, it's um, the uh, message you'll receive is to make contact with me at a specific email address. So that we've actually been receiving con contact through that right now. Okay, I'd like to send my question to you an email rather than bore you with them now. Great. But one thing does strike, and that is uh, these horrific fires that have happened. Um, they continue to point, although I don't know if it's been corroborated yet, to PG&E lines. Okay. I guess I'd like to have an understanding in the local space if we're if PG&E is even an issue in any of our open space, and if so, um, what can we do to make sure that the lines are safe? Um, another <coughs> topic that's come before um, in recent years, and particularly given the fact that our climate is changing and it's not quite so horrible to camp. 
outside is our homeless encampments, um, which have been a problem. And I'd like to make sure that you're aware of it in our area as well as in your area, and how we can make sure that those are nipped as quickly as possible. Thank you, and, and, and welcome. <coughs> Anything? Okay. Anything from the public? Stephen? Yeah, so I was at the meeting and I taped the meeting and it's up on YouTube and I posted on my website. Um, and uh, I'm real excited that we have Chief Gray because I think he's going to uh, do good things for our department and lead our fine department. And so, good, good, good. Um, do you have some concerns? Um, at that meeting, there was a, a code officer who spoke, I forget his name, but he was talking about um, making sure residences were, I guess, code compliant, and I'm just wondering if we're gonna see <coughs> code officers knock on our door um, to inspect our properties, make sure we're following code. Um, I, it, it was presented as a volunteer thing, but but I don't know if that volunteer would, thing would turn into something else. So that's that's one question. Um, and secondly, uh, because that meeting was really great, uh, we were talking about fire breaks, and there's a wide range of uh, understanding about how big a fire break should be, what constitutes a danger, and I just want to point out that there's uh, we're going to have to find a balance because some people want huge, huge fire breaks and other people, and I can consider myself one of those, want to make sure that there's a balance with the uh, natural resources and we don't <laughs> overdo it. I mean, we could, you know, pave over the valley, but then what would we have? And then third, um, the, uh, the issue with the pot, uh, the fire break on uh, on the Ponte Fire Road, as well as other breaks uh, throughout the valley, uh, I would be interested um, what, in our strategy for that uh, for for wildland suppression. I don't know if it fall, would fall under our department, or if that's the county or Cal Fire, whoever it is, but. Um, uh, certainly, everyone's uh, mindful with the campfire of what could happen in our valley. So, that's it. Thanks. Before you move on, mm -hmm. uh, I owe oh, Chief Gray an apology. He actually sent me a copy of that plot map, and uh, it was completely an uh, oversight on my part not to include it uh, along with. Uh, the report that he sent me, so I apologize for that. Um, and I also just want to state that you know we're not even two weeks into this, uh, but I don't think a day has gone by where either Chief Gray or his Deputy Chief Bob Senate haven't shown up at my office just to check in and see how things are going. Constant emails, talks. I know the BCs have been at uh, the fire station daily. Um, Chief Gray has spent significant time talking to the firefighters as his Deputy Chief Senate. Um, so it's all very appreciated, and uh, you know, I think we all recognize that there's going to be uh, bumps that need to be smoothed out that, that you just can't foresee, but uh, they've been very good at helping us with that. So from those perspectives, uh, I'm just very appreciative, and I feel very optimistic about the arrangement in terms of uh, being able to move forward. So thank you. I just want to kind of reiterate what Eric said. It has been an easy transition, so I just want to thank Chief Gray and his staff. Um, like Eric said, you know, Chief Senate has stopped by. And it's pretty much whatever questions we have that are arise. You know, there's there's people that we can't ask, and there's going to be an answer for us. So, um, like I said, the, the BCs, you know, the training chief, the veg management, everybody has reached out to us, and uh, it's very appreciative of, of them. So they are looking out for our best interests so, and the community. So thank you. You know, and I'm also glad that Captain Bracken spoke up. Um, he's been really going above and beyond and trying to help from the personnel side on that side been incredibly communicative with me making sure little things don't slip through the track slip through the tracks uh, 
just taking on tasks that certainly is well beyond the job description of a firefighter. I've told him personally, but I think it's good to state it in public. Uh, uh, in his role of captain, especially, he's uh, he's really stepped up. He's really uh, stepped forward, and he's doing everything he can to help all of this succeed. And uh, for myself, uh, I'm incredibly appreciative of that. And uh, and I believe he knows that. But I'm happy to say it again. Uh, and it's been incredibly appreciated. All right. And show it's been appreciated. Excuse me, did you already talk to Ms. Govan? I was trying to keep us on time. I, I haven't. Oh, okay. go ahead. Well, I, I haven't spoken on this issue yet, but I would like to. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, I think I, I told you guys last month that I've been going to the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings for a few years. Okay? And I know that these guys are men and women, but especially the chiefs are top-notch and I'm really excited that we will have access to their vegetation management teams to their nursing teams to um, different types of well we already we already do training with them uh, but I just think it is such a benefit to have all these additional resources and they're very responsive and, and I just think it's great. I do want to ask one question though. Last month, um, it was suggested that, let's see, I think it was Mr. Naylor and Ms. Green were going to be forming the committee to go and talk to Sam Rafael. Has that happened? And are you going to be doing that? So I think that's outside of, like, can we, I mean, I, that's not okay. what Well, it's right part now. of firm, for the fire department stuff. Right. <coughs> so you don't want to talk about it now. It, it's just, okay. That's no big deal. I just think it's going to be an absolutely fantastic communion or marriage or what she said. Yes. Thank you. Is, is, Isabella said everything I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to item I, Park and Recreation Matters. Um, one draft minutes of the initial meeting. Oh, sorry. I skipped over Fire Department item. Two. The date of the next fire commission meeting to be determined. So, just sticking that out there. All right, back to item I one: the minutes of the PNR commission meeting from October thirty or twenty third. Does anybody have any questions or comments on those? No. 